Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory where today we're going to take a look at the Plague Walker that's the pitch black abomination you can see on screen right now and I'd say let's get right into it so as always I'm going to show you some gameplay first and foremost and tell you a bit about the build, how it plays out, what you're going to do, what you're going to keep track of and in the end of the video I'm going to show you some uh, some of the, uh, the perks as well as the mutations and the equipment. So what's to say about this build? So in general speaking we're kind of a, a melee tank build to put it simple but furthermore this character has a little twist to it which is that it's going to play out as a supporter in some kind. So what we mean here is I actually found a way to make use of the Plague Walker mutation. So for those of you who don't know it, the Plague Walker mutation is, uh, as the name says, a mutation. And what it does is it gives you a damage aura, it says. So the more diseases you do have, the more damage you deal with this aura. But Probably everyone who tested this uh, mutation out will be able to tell you that it's it has no downside, don't get me wrong, but it's not worth it to use because the damage is simply nothing. Like I'm trying to show that off here, but the damage is so little you won't even notice it. So how can we make use of this uh, of this perk? So the thing we're going to do is we're using the the sheer well fact that we're attacking enemies that that's pretty much all we were going to need um, some of you may recall that there are mutations uh, not mutations but perks in this uh, game that debuff your your enemies if you attack them so what I'm talking about is the tenderizer and the suppressor perk so the tenderizer perk uh, makes your enemies receive more damage after you uh, for a certain time after you attack them, and the suppressor perk um, debuffs your enemies in a way that they uh, deal less damage. So the suppressor perk makes them deal, I think it's 30% less damage. So essentially, what that means is that when we're in combat with melee enemies they we simply take 30% less damage so that can be quite effective and as you can see here we have some pretty good survivability so what's going to happen is that always our health gets down pretty fast at first but then I'd say around the 40% mark we're getting significantly tankier due to our armor and that's kind of a sweet spot where when we're fighting most enemies our vampire's uh, super sledge will make it so that our our health stays at a certain point so it, it does depend on how, uh, how strong your enemies are for lower enemies your HP will kind of stagnate at something like 80%. When you're fighting ghouls and get crowded you, you may see that you're a bit lower, like 40% or something, but at a certain threshold at 20% health we automatically um, inject the stim pack into our system. We currently only carry super stim packs, but everyone would work. So that's that. Overall what your aim is with this build is to be kind of a group leader in a sense. So that means that... Oh yeah, there it is. That means we're always going uh, into the front line. We're taking down enemies uh, and aggroing them. So we want enemies to focus on our character. Why do we want to do that? Well, we, we can take some hits. So your other colleagues and teammates can focus on killing the enemies from range while we uh, take their aggro, take their hits, tank them and in the meantime significantly debuff them simply because they are in our melee range. 
So the Plague Walker mutation and the damage that follows through it um, deals consistent damage to every enemy within melee range. So especially in crowded situations this character can really buff your team. It can help out quite a lot and on the plus side we can do s fairly well when we're uh, walking around solo like you see in this video here. So we don't have uh, any solo perks like Lone Wanderer Active at the moment. Um, that's simply because I wanted to show off how well the uh, character would do in a scenario where it's in a team. You could be even more uh, tanky and stuff simply because uh, your teammates could share perks with you. But overall all of that doesn't really matter. So you can see quite well how it performs. Like obviously uh, Scorch Beasts for melee characters. I tend to say that a lot but if you are just playing the game it's always a nice uh, option to have Enforcer perk in your, in your perk cards and swap that in, use a shotgun, shoot the uh, shoot the Scorch Beast once or twice and you will see that it uh, is forced to land and then you can take on it. I'm not going to, to do that, I'm just going to do my uh, usual route. Um, it's not that big of a benefit to us when we're taking it down. I mean you can probably guess how it would turn out. It would be taking some time, uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but we do have uh, a significant buff from Psycho buff if we want to use that. But um, as this character is pretty much uh, <coughs> designed to be in a team, you would have your DPS uh, teammates to take uh, that enemy out. So what else can we say about this build? I really do like the aesthetics. Um, we're running around in pitch black armor. Uh, the green hood uh, synergizes really well with the Plague Walker mask. I think it's called Plague Walker mask. And well, I think we, we can move on now. The, the Scorch piece is not going to land anytime soon. It's just uh, taking its, its flights where it bombards the ground. Not particularly interesting to watch if I just stand there for another five minutes. So, what else can we say? Um, the the build feels quite nice. Like it, it's a lot of fun, and obviously it has potential to really uh, grow damage. Simply, at the moment, in order to be a bit tankier, we do use a vampire super sledge, as I said. So we basically have no damage buffs for for our main weapon but if you're concerned about that and want to do more damage you can easily transform the character well you, you could use a junkies weapon if you can afford one or happen to have one but other noteworthy picks would be anti-armor for example or f even furious uh, if you're fighting off bigger enemies generally speaking um, slugger weapons are kind of slow so furious you need 10 hits before enemy, uh, before you have the full buff from Furious, so it's arguably not worth it except for special occasions. Like, for example, if you're fighting a Sheep Squatch, uh, it could definitely be useful. Overall, the good thing about this build and the fun twist is that um, you will probably be the only person you know that uh, makes use of the Plague Walker mutation and that's something I consider a good thing, right? So I really wrapped my head around it when the moment the, the Plague Walker mask was available I really wanted to make a build that's focused around it, but I tried different things, I tried to uh, boost the Plague Walker mutation's damage output with Adrenal Reaction, I tried to look into it and see if it's affected by any legendary effects you have on your weapon or something, but 
there's no way around it. Arguably, the damage output gets better if you have more uh, diseases active at the same time. But diseases can be a real pain in this game. And the damage doesn't ever get high enough to be your your main source of damage so uh, this was really the the only the only thing i could come up with where i say we do make use out of the plague walker mutation and arguably uh if you do these kind of support characters where you want to debuff enemies uh you can use range or explosives work quite well simply because you do cover a quite a big uh area of effect and therefore quite a big amount of enemies but as for melee um, this really seemed like a good option like by the way every time you see these uh, little black clouds coming from enemies they are that means they are affected by the by the perks uh, by the by the mutation so as for the gameplay I think you saw how it turned out I sadly can't show you how it would perform in a team but Arguably you need to test it out anyways, so it wouldn't be all that beneficial. Okay. Fuck off, man. And uh, what should I say? Well, I'm just going to show you the character. Arguably the aesthetics of the character are one of its biggest strong suits. Like, you can do whatever you like with this aesthetic, but I feel like it really uh, felt appropriate. Like, the the shoulders with the heavy combat armor do really make this this character look like a crow or something I, I don't know I think it turned out very well uh, I'm not all that all that happy with the with the armor choice like I initially planned this character to be using crossbows which I think would have worked quite well but well anyways this is how it turned out so let's get into the mutations and the perks so as you can see here we do have red worms uh, active whenever you fight ghouls you will find that you're infected with red worms pretty easily um, if you have trouble to keep a disease what I tend to do is I uh, carry a lot of um, dirty water with me so just chuck like 20 of them and you're you can be sure to to have a disease otherwise I I do have the carnivore mutation which you can see down here so uh, this wouldn't be working all that much but eating raw meat gives you uh, diseases pretty easily so that's just something you have to find out for yourself I didn't feel like I had a problem with maintaining at least one uh, disease at a time so here we can see we are quite mutated. We do have adrenal reaction, carnivore, grounded, marsupial, plague walker, scaly skin, speed demon and twisted muscles. So most of it is self-explanatory here. Um, arguably speed demon isn't necessary but even though we are on a melee character I think the extra movement speed is worth it. So twisted muscle is a no-brainer. Uh, scaly skin and grounded we don't really make use out of energy damage um, we do have the heating coil uh, mod on our super sledge so we're missing out on a few uh, points of energy damage because grounded um, uh, decreases our energy damage output but it's so low that it's worth the 100 extra energy resistance carnivore um, well you don't need it at all like this is just uh, a convenience mutation I'd say so feel free to pick something else or don't use it uh, it's up to you and I think the rest speaks for itself right so uh, on to the to the build itself talking about perks here so we do have 15 strength which shouldn't be all that much of a surprise for a melee character um, we do have three ranks of slugger all maxed out martial artist uh, for the extra swing speed blocker and bandolier um, you know it by now but uh, in a perfect world I would lo uh, love to have three ranks of blocker on me 
But as I switch my characters all the time, I tend to have a lot of ammo on me, even though I'm a melee character at the moment, so I needed Bandolier. But uh, I'd really uh, advise you to take Blocker. You have a lot of carry weight with this, with this uh, build, so you shouldn't have a problem without Bandolier. Um, on to Perception, I do have Grenadier, uh, here's nothing we desperately need and one thing I didn't show off uh, exactly but um, we carry something here that fits the character quite well and this is the Hallucinogen Gas Grenade. These things, uh, they have a, like, a, they, they make it so that crowded enemies within the range of it start to attack each other. And that's something that fits the character quite well. You're using a gas attack, so to speak. And yeah, you can find the. You just need to find the the gas canisters, not the damaged ones, by the way. And then you can make these. Like you won't probably won't have a big amount of them, but they're actually fun to use. And you don't need demolitions expert, so because they're not doing damage per se. So the only thing that could benefit us here was uh, <coughs> Grenadier, so these things have a little larger radius. On to Endurance, we are tanky and have 12 Endurance. Uh, mixed in here are Lifegiver and Fireproof, these should be self-explanatory. Adamantium Skeleton, um, as a melee character we're on the move constantly and getting staggered and getting limbs uh, broken is really, really frustrating when you're getting crowded, so Adamantium Skeleton is a must-have on this character in my opinion. And last but not least we do have Cam Resistant. This is not necessary in any way, I just found it uh, a nice pick so we can use Psycho Buff as much as we want without having to risk it or having to risk an addiction at all. On to Charisma. Um, charisma could be higher here, um, it's up to you, but I found that, well, Suppressor rank 3 really benefits us, 30% uh, less damage from enemies, we're basically constantly attacking them as soon as they are in melee range, so the 2 seconds don't really uh, matter too, uh, too much, and therefore every enemy in your melee range uh, does 30% less damage which also means that you're taking 30% less damage. Combine that with blocker here if you have it maxed out uh, you can really make melee enemies pretty redundant. On to tenderizer. Tenderizer isn't as w worthy to max out as suppressor is but we had one point left, so usually I just take one rank. Arguably rank 3 would be better, obviously, but pretty much what it does, every enemy that's in your melee range takes 6% um, more damage because they are attacked constantly by our mutation, same as Suppressor. On to Intelligence, we do have Makeshift Warrior rank 5, which is arguably not necessary here, um, simply because the melee weapons we're using have quite a good condition, and they don't degrade all that fast, and pretty much cost nothing. Like, if you repair them, it's just some basic wood, steel, and adhesive, it's, it's not expensive to repair them. What I'd recommend here is uh, first aid, simply because we're risking a lot, we're pretty much never using Stimpaks on our own, we're always waiting till we're down to 20% health, so our, uh, to 30%, 20% health, so our <coughs> uh, perk, Bone Survivor, will use a Stimpak for us. What you could do here is, if you don't want ma uh, Makeshift Warrior at rank 5, you could use first aid rank 3 and arguably uh, even the pharmacist perk but feel free to pick whatever you like here on to agility we do have action boy one rank of marathoner through hiker and born survivor so through hiker not necessary at all uh, I'd rather recommend you max out marathoner and maybe even throw in some uh, points into adrenaline simply so you get a little bit more damage output this was kind of necessary for me to take so I can walk bone survivor really necessary here unless you do have a, a 
armor piece that does the job for you and the rest is simply beneficial because we, we don't actually need all that much agility we're standing a lot in melee range and we're not using power attacks all that often but having no extra AP refresh from Lone Wanderer and I think we don't even have a AP regen piece of armor so rank 3 of Action Boy is not a bad choice here Marathoner well I mean you could argue that one rank of Marathoner doesn't do us all that much of a favor but um, what else could we take here? One rank of anything isn't all that much, so unless we can afford not to use through Hiker, that's the build for now. And on to Luck, a uh, pretty standard combination here, 8 Luck with Bloody Mass, Class Freak and Starch Jeans. Uh, Class Freak in this occasion really useful simply because we do have a lot of mutations. Bloody Mass always a good pick and Starch Jeans well we want to keep our, ready, uh, our mutations after all our build is uh, pretty much centered around a mutation so uh, last thing I'm going to show off is our equipment here so we do use uh, the Brotherhood officer suit simply because it's so dark um, obviously if you have a shielded uh, one or access to a shielded one use that uh, treated is only the first upgrade rank I think it is so it only gives us one strength and endurance uh, I think it can go up to three strength and endurance I'm not quite sure but obviously more strength more damage uh, will take it uh, our backpack nothing to speak here the plague doctor mask then we do have bolstering so I went for bolstering as you can see here they're all uh, they're all broken so if you repair them you're significantly tankier let's say that way but even though they are broken we are currently at 230 uh, and 200 uh, 233 damage resistance and 233 uh, 34 energy resistance so you can see that uh, even though our armor is broken except for one single piece uh, we're still having quite some uh, resistances to speak of. Uh, we could go up to about 350 each I think w it was when it was all repaired and I don't even have the best uh, modifications on this character so arguably if you have polish on every piece of this three metal armor pieces here um, you would probably go up to 400 uh, damage and energy resistance. Uh, well, what else do we have? Is there anything here? Well, we have a Cavalier piece, weapon weight reduction. We do have radiation resistance, environmental resistance and poison resistance. That's something to speak of, but other than that there's nothing really uh, boosting our survivability, so you can get even significantly better here. Uh, Sentinel would be a good choice here, simply because we're just standing in one spot and whacking enemies that are crowding around us and last but not least our weapon um, we do have this here vampire swing speed grognak battle mace which actually is a, a super sledge the battle mace is just a skin for it so well that's about it uh, a single vampires one would probably do, but you would have to take more stim packs. So as you saw here, it's not like with vampires heavy weapons that that you just can stay at full health all the time as long as you're firing, because it's just a bit slower. But trust me when I say with a with a non vampires uh, slugger weapon, you wouldn't be that tanky. You you don't feel it that much simply because. Uh, it doesn't keep your health uh, full but you really it, it really helps you to survive longer without using Stimpak so that's something to to think about but well guys what should I say that was it for today's video I hope you enjoyed the build and I I gotta say I was pretty happy uh, that I found a found a use for for the Plague Walker mutation. It's something I was worried about for the longest time. I really wanted to to find something, find a use for it. And well, that's it. Bye.